Hey everyone. So in this video, I'd like to prove the double angle identities for sine and cosine. So in a later video, we'll talk about how to use these identities and how to interpret these identities. But here, I'd just like to focus on proving these identities for now. And so to prove these identities, uh, we can use the angle sum identities for sine and cosine. So maybe let me remind you what those are. So sine of the sum of two angles, u and v, well, this is equal to sine of our first angle, u, times cosine of our second angle, plus cosine of our first angle, times sine of our second angle. And then our angle addition identity for cosine well, here we have cosine of u plus v. This is equal to cosine of our first angle times cosine of our second angle. Take away sine of our first angle times sine of our second angle. And so how can we use these identities to prove the double angle identity for sine? So here, we want to be able to write sine of 2x in a slightly different way. We want to be able to find a new expression for uh, sine of twice our input x. And so here, we can recognize that sine of 2x, well, that's the same as x plus x, right? 2x is the same as x plus x. Maybe I'll use color here to really highlight how this will work. So here's sine of x plus x. That's the same as sine of 2x. And now here we can use our angle addition identity with the sum of the angles x and x to write this as sine of x times cosine of the second angle x plus cosine of the first angle x and multiply that with sine of our second angle x. But here uh, order of multiplication doesn't matter, so sine times cosine, sine of x times cosine of x, that's really the same as cosine of x times sine of x. And so really we've just got two copies of sine of x times cosine of x added together. And so that's equivalent to 2 times sine of x times cosine of x. And so there we have it. This is the double angle identity. Sine of 2x is equal to 2 times sine of x times cosine of x. And now how can we rewrite uh, cosine of 2x? Well, we can go through the same motions. We can rewrite this as cosine of x plus x. And so using our angle addition identity for cosine, we can rewrite this as cosine of the first angle, cosine of x, times cosine of the second angle, which is also x, minus sine of the first angle, times sine of our second angle. But cosine of x times cosine of x, well, that's really just taking the one quantity and multiplying it to itself, right? This is cosine squared of x. And then sine of x times sine of x, that's also uh, the square. It's the square of sine of x. So here, what we're saying is that cosine of 2x, this can be expressed as cosine squared of x minus sine squared of x. So this is the first of three double angle identities for cosine. And so the other two double angle identities for cosine come from using our Pythagorean identities. All right, so let me remind you of those. I'll write those here out on the right side. All right, our Pythagorean identities, the main ones are the sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x is equal to 1. And we can shuffle some terms around here uh, by subtracting sine squared of x from both sides to get that cosine squared of x is equal to 1 minus sine squared of x. And that sine squared of x 
is equal to 1 minus cosine square root of x. This is always true. And so sometimes it'll be beneficial for us for us to uh, have this double angle identity in terms of just sine or just cosine on that right hand side. And so here we can replace cosine squared of x with what we said here. It's equivalent to 1 minus sine squared of x. And so here another way of writing this expression is uh, cosine squared of x, that's the same as 1 minus sine squared of x. And we still have that minus sine squared of x from before. And so this is identical to 1 minus 2 sine squared of x. So here maybe I'll list out that this is the first double angle identity for cosine. This is another one, maybe I'll just list it as the second. And another way we can rewrite this double angle identity for cosine is we can do the same thing, but instead of replacing cosine squared of x, we can replace sine squared of x. So here I can, I can uh, rewrite my sine squared of x as 1 minus cosine squared of x. So here this is equivalent to cosine squared of x minus I'll write this in parentheses because we're going to subtract away whatever sine squared of x is, and sine squared of x is 1 minus cosine squared of x. And so let's distribute this subtraction, right? So here this is going to be minus 1 and plus cosine squared of x. And so that plus cosine squared of x is going to add with our cosine squared of x that's earlier in our expression. So this is going to give us 2 cosine squared of x minus 1. So this is a third double angle identity for cosine of x, or cosine. And so this is cosine of 2x. This is one of them. This is our third one, cosine of 2x. These are our three double angle identities for cosine. And all of these double angle identities uh, are used quite frequently in later math classes. And so you know, these are identities that are worth memorizing. Um, but here we saw that we could build these without too much difficulty from our angle addition formulas for sine and cosine. And then for, the, for two of our, our three cosine double angle identities, we had to use the Pythagorean identities as well. Um, but really, if you remember your angle addition formulas for sine and cosine, then you can quickly derive these formulas as well, or these identities. And so uh, if you re remember the angle addition identities, you can save yourself some memory uh, here.